Hey friends, welcome to our reading lesson for Thursday. I hope you guys have had a great morning so far of learning. Um, before we get started, I wanted to just remind you that today we are beginning our new Mariner Bucks um, reward program. So if you haven't heard about that, check um, your parents' emails or check our class Facebook for information about that. I will be rewarding you for every Zoom you can participate in. If you can watch a YouTube video instead of going to Zoom, that's fine. Um, I will reward you for seesaw activities that you do, I ready that you complete, and then participating in Facebook challenges. So everything that you're doing, I wanna reward you for, and then there is a whole system of prizes that you can get with those rewards. So make sure to check that out. I will keep track of those starting today. All right, so today we're gonna begin our reading lesson talking about another text structure in nonfiction text. So if you remember, so far this week, we've been talking about text structures in nonfiction books. That means how a nonfiction book is built, how a nonfiction book is put together and made so that the reader can understand it. So far, we've talked about three of them. The first one was a descriptive text structure. That means when you're reading a story, the author is describing something to you so that you can understand it. The second structure we talked about was compare and contrast. That means that the author is comparing and contrasting two or more things in the book. So that means that it's talking, the author is talking about how those items are similar and how they're different so that you can better understand them. The next text structure we talked about was chronological order. You all are very familiar with that one. And that is when the author describes something using the order of time. Remember that chrono means time. Today we're talking about a new text structure. This text structure is one of my favorites because we see it all around us in everyday life and it's cause and effect. First I want to start off by showing you a flocabulary video that describes what a cause and effect are and how you can see them in everyday life. So I'm going to share my screen with you and we'll get started with that. All right here we go. You know, you can find causes and effects in all kinds of stories. And there are usually phrases that are clues to help you know what's a cause and what's an effect. Let me tell you a story. And I'll highlight some of those phrases along the way. But first, I know that cause is the reason that something happened. But what comes next? We got this, Captain. The thing that happened is the effect. Cause and effect. So keep your eyes open for the causes and effects 
in stories and in life. Flowcat, we at All right. I love that video because it's a great way to explain real life examples of cause and effect. Um, so talking about cause and effect, cause and effect is, let me go ahead and share my screen with you so you can see my presentation. Here we go. All right. So cause and effect. The cause is why something happened. And the effect is what happened because of that. So let's talk about a couple of real life examples that you might have experienced before. Um, so you guys know I love my Dr. Pepper. And you have seen this happen to me before in class, unfortunately. But what would happen if I brought this Dr. Pepper into school and I was just carrying it like this, talking to some other teacher friends in the parking lot, What's gonna to happen to that Dr. Pepper when I open the lid up? You're right, it's gonna explode. So the cause is that I shook my Dr. Pepper around, was a little careless with it. The effect is that when I open it up, it's gonna explode all over me, which you guys have seen that happen before. So cause, I shook it, effect, it explodes. Okay, let's think about last night. I told you guys that I took a, been on a long walk last night. We went to the Abbey Nature Preserve. So Finn and I were walking, walking, walking for like two hours. So the cause is that we went on a long, long walk. What do you think the effect was when Finn got home after walking for two hours with me? Yeah, the effect was that he was tired. He was sleepy. He went and laid down in his bed and went to sleep for the rest of the night. So the cause is that we went on a long walk and got a lot of exercise. The effect is that he was tired afterwards. So now that you've heard some examples of real life cause and effect, I want you to think to yourself, what are some causes and effects that you have seen happen in your home lately? All right. So all around us, we see causes and effects all day. Um, I had a cause that I was... I let Finn in through the house, through my side door, and the effect was that he brought in a bunch of leaves with him when he came inside because he was out there playing. And so there's leaves right here on my floor that I need to sweep up. So causes and effects are all around us. Now today, we're not gonna be reading a book together, but we're gonna read a nonfiction article. And this article is about weather since we've been studying weather and science. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you and show you the article that we're reading. As we're reading, please make sure that you're reading along with me on your screen and that you're paying attention because this is important information and an important way to learn more about causes and effects, not just in our everyday lives, but in nature around us. All right, so I'm gonna start reading. And as I read, I'm gonna stop every now and then as I see a cause and effect in the passage. Here we go. March is filled with many different types of weather. Weather is the condition of the outside air. Tornadoes are one type of weather. Tornado winds can reach 300 miles per hour. That's as fast as some airplanes can fly. Keep reading for answers to some common questions about weather. The truth about weather. There is a science behind every kind of weather. Uncover some interesting weather facts. Why do clouds sometimes look as if they are on the ground instead of in the sky? Sometimes clouds form near the ground. That is called fog. Let's stop for a moment. I see a cause is that clouds form near the ground. The effect is that it creates fog. Cause, clouds form on the ground. Effect, it's called fog. That is called fog. Both fog and clouds are made up of tiny drops of water that hang in the air. Fog forms over the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California. What is a blizzard? A blizzard is a winter storm with strong winds. The wind blows the snow so that it's hard to see. Most blizzards last at least three hours. Okay, so I hear another cause and effect. The cause is that wind blows snow very, very hard. The effect is that it creates a blizzard. Cause, winds blow the snow fast. The effect, 
is called a blizzard. Here's a great one. Which comes first, thunder or lightning? Thunder and lightning happen at the same time. As lightning strikes, it heats the air around it. That causes the air to expand. When the air expands, we hear a loud crash called thunder. The sound reaches us after we have seen the lightning. Okay, so the cause is that lightning strikes through the sky. The effect is that it expands the air and creates thunder. Cause is lightning, the effect is thunder. Okay, we have one more. How does rain make a rainbow? Rainbows appear when sunlight passes through raindrops in the sky. Wait a second, I already heard a cause and effect. A rainbow is the effect, but what causes it? Think to yourself and look back in the passage. What causes the rainbow to appear? Very good. Sunlight goes through raindrops and that creates the rainbow. As the light passes through, it is broken up into seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So we have a lot of weather factors that we just learned about, and we learned the causes and then the effects. I think my favorite one was the thunder and lightning one. The lightning causes thunder, and a lot of us don't realize that because we see them, it looks like they're happening at the same time. But the lightning comes first, and then it eff the effect is that the thunder comes afterwards. So guys, I want you to think to yourself, as you're going about your daily activities today, what are some causes and effects that you see in your life? What are some causes and effects that you hear in the stories that you read? What are causes and effects that you see with your brothers and sisters or your aunts and uncles or your dog even, whoever is in your home right now, your mom and dad? What are some causes and effects that you see them going through each day? It's great to start recognizing those so that we can become more aware of them as we read our nonfiction stories. All right, your seesaw assignment today. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up for you. It is called Reading 423 Cause and Effect Text Structure. So on this assignment, I have quite a few causes that will go across the top of your screen and the effects will be on the bottom. You are going to match them up on top of each other. So for example, a cause would be that Mike had a hole in his pocket. The effect would be he didn't have any money for lunch because the money fell out of the hole. So take your time on this assignment, really think it through, what would cause these things to happen and what would be the effects of them happening. When you're done, click the green check and submit. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And if not, I hope to see you during math today. Remember that our Mariner Bucks start today, so make sure that you are participating as much as you can to get those bucks and get those really exciting prizes. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great afternoon. Bye.